Do you know when they say that social media is all about just being honest now? So someone just rung me and um, they're on holiday and they wanted to book in a cockapoo. Which, if you say cockapoo to a dog groomer, I mean cockapoo is probably the most popular dog that there is now. But um, you never really know what you're getting because cockapoos are not a, a breed, cockapoos are mongrel. So you can get a dog that um is temperamental or a dog that's a great temperament you can get a dog that um has a uh, relatively straightforward fur or really difficult fur you can get really matted overgrown fur fur that ruins your equipment um cases where if they're not done regular enough um it can it can really sort of overrun they can be oversized um they can be very very difficult to to do they're not very they're not as straightforward as they look and the expectations of the owners can sometimes be um, a little bit different to what's realistic to the groom. But nonetheless, that's what they are. Um, and they're, they're a very common dog now. And um, so you never know what you're getting when you take one on. Um, and, uh, and obviously we're really busy. All the groomers are going to be busy this time of year. All year, hopefully. And sometimes, you know, people are on your waiting list, but sometimes there are a few that slip through the net and get short notice bookings if they're lucky. If you've had a swapsy round, it doesn't suit everybody else on the waiting list and you've got that one thing that you can offer them. So they ring up and say, oh, I'm sure, in fact, I quote, I'm sure you're busy for the next two or three weeks, but can you fit in my dog? What's it happens? I have got quite a slot, a slot that's quite soon, just by chance. Um, okay, great. Um, can I ask how much? You kind of need to know that question, don't you? Because you need to know roughly what you're budgeting for. Because the prices do vary, I wouldn't say dramatically, in the professional grooming world, with qualified professional groomers. They don't really change that much. Maybe if there's, but might be a bit of £15 variant on grooms, you know. Unless you're someone who's not running a proper business or you haven't got a clue what you're doing um, and you're just doing it for peanuts because it's your hobby and you're not qualified and you don't take the profession seriously, then you're going to do it at a giveaway price, you know. Or then you've got people who maybe are in certain parts of London that their rents are so high on their shops that they have to add an additional sort of thirty, forty pound on top of a groom to what an average one is because of because of that, you know. To be fair, we're kind of all underpaid anyway for that kind of breed. But um I mentioned the price, the cockapoo, and she says, Oh, I'm um I'm in Windsor, um in in a couple of weeks so um they're a little bit cheaper there so i think i'll leave it till then hmm okay so you think you're gonna waste five ten minutes of my time doing this fake phone call and you want this dog booked in you want an emergency appointment for your dog you've got your book dog booked in very quickly and why have you why do you come to me do i look like home bargains you know, I've got 16 years experience. I've got a whole media career. I've got a highly qualified, experienced backtrack. What, why are you coming to me? Why, why are you ringing my number? What's the point in that? Because you don't deserve my service, do you? It's quite insulting that. That person's going to be, what, £5 cheaper? Don't don't ring me. Don't waste my time. I could have been doing many things in that five or ten minutes than speaking to a time waster. Don't waste people's time. Hey, if you're a decent groomer out there, know your worth, know what you're charging, even though you're probably underpriced anyway, because the average groomer is underpriced. Those of us that have got our price point where it's kind of like an average price point. If you're a groomer that's charging peanuts for your service... Well, you are just degrading our profession and you are the same as people doing it at home that don't know what they're doing with blades and just make the whole thing just completely unappreciated and dangerous. But you do have a client base. If you are somebody 
that will go down the road because someone's five pound cheaper and you're not someone who is proactive in finding out what your groomer can do for you. Is your dog safe with the groomer? Is your groomer qualified? Is your groomer experienced? Does your groomer know about your breed? Does your groomer know about your fur type? What would your groomer do in an emergency? If you don't care and you want to go around somewhere else that's five pound cheaper, well, you don't deserve a professional groomer. You've been watching Daniela Forshaw, Unmuzzled. If you don't like my content, blame Charlotte.